Dobre rano, Jen. Dobre rano, Honzo. It's such a beautiful day. What should we do? Well, I think I've got a plan for us. Oh, yeah. A sort of a challenge. What do you know about Czech golden hands? Ooh, Czech golden hands. I've heard this expression before. I was teaching an elderly gentleman, and he said that um, every year he goes out to his hata and he makes some big improvement, like he'll build a fireplace, or maybe he'll build an indoor toilet or something like that. <laughs> and um, he told me that the Czechs have a reputation for being very good with their with their hands, very skilled. Is that is that Czech golden hands? I think you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. And you've been here a decade. What about you? Do you have <laughs> golden hands? Well, funny you should mention that because I used to be craftier back in the United States when we had a garage. I had a little metal smithing studio, but you live in the big city of Prague and you, there, there's no opportunity to kind of like use your hands. As far as fixing things around the house, I think that's more your domain. You're, mm. you're very skilled at, at doing those kind of repairs. I don't really get involved in that. Yeah, unless there's electricity involved. <laughs> anything, then we call it professional. Yeah, anything that could kill me, I, I stay away from. So do you think it's true that the Czechs have golden hands? I mean, this might just be something that the Czechs attribute to themselves, like, oh, I'm, I'm Czech, and so clearly I'm more skilled than my, than my Hungarian <laughs> neighbors. Um, kind of like how the Italians are like, I'm Italian, I'm a good lover. <laughs> so I don't know if it's really true about the Czechs. Um, but they seem to say it. They seem to claim so. Well, I think I found a place in the city oh. where we could test your golden hands. Oh, nice. So first, you're gonna need these. Oh my gosh. What are these? <laughs> I hope they fit. I think they're meant to fit everybody. Good. <laughs> so if, if you can't complete the job, I'll pop those on okay. and, and finish it for you. And you wouldn't be building something in Europe if you didn't have one of these. One of these. We're going to Ikea? Not even close. Okay. <laughs> awesome, I'll just put these in here. Okay. There you go. Cool, so we're going today. Yeah, I think we'll finish our coffees, you'll get changed and we'll hit the road. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, let's go. My quest to become more Czech is never ending. Even after 10 years in this country, there's so much I haven't seen or done. Even in Prague. You need to get out of your comfort zone. Sometimes you have to take the 22 in the opposite direction. To where? Strasznice. Are we going out to like a hata? Have you, have you bought us a hata? <laughs> I don't think you'll find any hatas in Strasznice. Strasznice is a neighborhood in the district of Prague 10, home to the former factory of Czech Java motorcycles. Java? Java. I'm gonna learn how to ride a motorcycle? Mm, nope. Tomas, nice to see Hello, you. Hello, Jim. How's it going? It's going well. How are you? This is where we are. This is amazing. What is this place? Uh, Jim, this is a place where people come to make things for you. Oh, I get to make something. You get to make something. This is so exciting. So what we've prepared for you yeah. is a little center flower. It can look something like You're gonna teach me how to make this. You're uh, gonna instruct me how to do it. You know, the, the way we do things at Fushka uh -huh. is that we give people uh, instruction manuals and they uh, can work totally on their own. The best way to learn things is to make them. So I 100% agree. Yeah, so if yeah. I was standing right, right behind your back and was telling you do this, 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 you would do it, but then you probably wouldn't remember why you did what you did. Yeah, exactly. That's why you need to understand yourself. Okay. This needs to be done. And it's in Czech. That's very challenging. Ooh, Jen, I thought you speak Czech. Ah, oh, yeah. I speak like restaurant Czech, <laughs> and hospody Czech. 
Okay. So it's about time to learn uh, woodworking Czech. I agree. I'll be here all, all day okay. with you. So a anything you need from me, I'll be right here to help you. Okay. So if you're ready. I'm ready. You can go and get into it. Let's do it. Let's do it. This place is my dream. And I didn't let on to Tomas, but I have a bit of experience in a wood shop. That's it, Ben. You're out. <laughs> Maybe I need a few pointers. Okay, I need to solve it. It had been a while since I handled a table saw, so Tomasz gave us a brief demonstration and then let us loose. Right, the question is, how does one get to be perfectly flat? I mean, I, I see, I get the principle behind it, but it's weird because I can't really hold this. You could try using the clamp. Here, let me show you. Clamps! Those work pretty well. Thanks for the tip, Mr. Uh, cameraman. I think I can take it from here. Why do the people come in here? Why do your customers come in here? What do they say to you? The original idea of my customer would be me two years ago, uh, an office person that wants to relax, do something manual, uh, disconnect from the digital world, from the online, and focus on one thing that, that is making by hand. Looks good. Soft felt powerful. Soft felt powerful. Check golden hands. So far, so good. <laughs> and how's your, your woodworking check? My woodworking check is excellent. Have you ever heard of an application called Google Photo Translate? It's very helpful. Uh, many times we get couples, so spending time together, working on a on a on a project together. Because we don't want these corners to be like super sharp. Little Tobik will rub up against them and I'll cut himself. We want them to be nice and smooth. Okay, so Tobik's safe. <laughs> Tobik's safe. That machine's a little dangerous. Why don't you let me help you out? Hansa, I think I can handle this one. You sure? I'm pretty sure. Wanted, unopinionated cameraman with no woodworking experience. Apply in the comment section below. I think we've got to glue it. Glue it? And then what? We wait for the glue to dry. <laughs> I would say I have just the right amount of glue dripping out. So Jen, what's next? Now, I think we wait for the glue to dry. Okay, how long? I don't know, you have the manual, what does it say? Oh yeah. Mommy, 30 minutes, Chas na Um, I'm pretty caffeinated. Is there something else we can do? Yeah, I think I've got an idea, but we're gonna have to be quick. Okay, let's, okay go. let's go. Let's go. Dear viewer, we would never subject you to watching glue dry. So you're welcome to join us on a quick break time excursion to Pelshimov, home to the Museum of Records and Curiosities. Their Czech Golden Hands exhibition is unparalleled in, well, all of the Czech Republic. Okay, these guys take Czech golden hands to the next level. Like Jan Jerzy Rothsam, 
who recreated Mukha's famous Slav epic, only 222 times smaller. Or Tomasz Korda, who made sculptures out of matchsticks and match heads. The collection includes over 800,000 matches. Pavel Svoboda crafted this magnificent Java pedak out of a record 22 types of wood. Wait a minute, wood? Our glue must be dry by now. Time to hurry back to the former Java factory to finish our own magnificent creations. Aren't you gonna get in? Hey Jen, it looks like the mirror's about to fall off. Can you see if there's a mechanic in Strashnice? Hanzo, no check with golden hands would call a mechanic for a wobbly mirror. I'm sure we can find some glue in this little town. Okay, we're just gonna go by the pictures, I think. <laughs> step two is to, like, step two doesn't make sense for us. Step three <laughs> is to cut this into the size of the mirror. Okay. But these are so small. How much was this? If I make a mistake, can we buy another one? 169. We're fine, okay. We're I, hope they have, I hope they have another one. This is why people wear overalls. <laughs> <laughs> Art and like. It's windy. <laughs> now the mesh. What do you think? Either side or top bottom? Uh, maybe top bottom. I don't know why the mesh is a part of this, but let's imagine that it's important for some reason. I think based on going to nursery school and kindergarten, that the next step is to put it on the thing. Okay, do it. Okay. Make sure it's straight. Okay, now do I have to hold it for five minutes? Yeah. Maybe having Chet Golden Hands isn't only about spending decades of your life crafting art from random household objects, but the ability to be self-reliant and fix something with your own hands instead of relying on some expert to do it. There are few things as satisfying as sanding and oiling a piece of furniture you just made with your own two hands. I'm pretty proud of this. I think this is um, beyond what I thought I could make with no preparation, no training on the machines. I mean, he did show us how to use the mach machines, but then after you use the machines, then you're fine. Oh! Disaster averted. Oh god. It was very inspiring. It was very inspiring. I almost felt like, what, what could I possibly make that was as interesting um, as the exhibits there? But those people put in you know, 20,000 hours into their exhibits, and this has taken me five, so I'm pretty content with the amount of time I've been able to commit and the joy that this will bring me in my living room.
us. Wow, what a day. I'm exhausted. I am going to sleep <laughs> so hard tonight. It wasn't like it was strenuous manual labor, but there was a little bit of stress with the machines and getting everything at a 90 degree angle. Were you stressed? Yeah, and also I thought my mirror was gonna fly off on the, on the <laughs> I was stressed, but I was like, you know, we'll just take it to a mechanic. <laughs> but not when you have Chet Golden hands. You have to take care of these things yourself. And what did you think about uh, Tomasz's uh, workshop, Fushka? It's like an art space, first of all. It's somewhere where I would go just to watch other people work. And like, you know, he, he makes you like the coffee, and he's got some treats, and like that, that's a really cool space to just kind of be with the team building. Um, he suggested married couples or fianced couples working there. What did you, how did you feel about that? Do you think it's a good challenge for? Oh, I think it's, it's great. I think there could be a TV show just of, <laughs> of uh, new couples and see how they survive Fushka. <laughs> You know, the cool thing about this was it wasn't like a place you rent and then you have to go figure out what wood to buy and all this stuff and the machines. I don't know that I would have done that, but Tomas, as the host, did a really nice job. What did you think about that? Yeah, he was he was engaged, but not directing. And, um, and so he was always available and he felt available. He was walking the workshop and um, even it, it even said at one point, oh, I've never seen anyone do it like that, which is, but he didn't jump in and tell us uh, how to do it. Yeah, he was very attuned to to the vibe of the of the client or the, the guests. Like, does she want me to show her how to do this or is she just figuring it out and I'm gonna just stand back while she does that? And that was cool because now I really feel like I made something. Mm -hmm. And the next time I go back, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna be a lot more confident. What about the uh, the Chekhov and Hands exhibit at the Museum of Records and Oddities? That was so incredibly Czech. It to <laughs> so the Czechs have this way of qualifying everything. Like this is the oldest bridge still standing on this side of the Elbe, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and they've got so many of these like uh, these superlative things, but it's so funny. They're always these qualifiers. So you go to this this records museum, which is hilarious, and they have to come up with some record for everything. So like this wooden Java motorcycle is made of 22 types of wood, mm -hmm. and that somehow sets a record. Like the last one had 21 types of wood. <laughs> you know, I'm sure some people look at someone who spent a full seven years of their life making matchstick you know, sculptures and thinking like, wow, you could have gone to med school. You could have done a lot of things with that time, but that's like the beauty of it. It's this complete art, this unnecessary thing. Like this, this stand that we made for the plant, it is unnecessary. The plant could sit on the ground, like the rest of our plants, but this is like, it's just something that gives us joy, mm -hmm. you know? And like, that's what art is. Right. And that's what that's what they're displaying in that museum. So having this DIY golden hands experience, <laughs> do you feel more Czech? Um, I think the Czechs are self-sufficient and I think the mirror, fixing the mirror actually made me feel the most self-sufficient. That and, and when we finally assembled the plant stands, the, everything lined up in 90 degree angles. That definitely made me feel feel good. Um, but yeah, I think this has gotten both of us a little bit closer to, um, to something that feels Czech. I agree. I think we're ready to buy an old hot tub, like fix it up now that I know how to use a table saw. I think, I think we can manage it, what do you think? Maybe? Let's get, yeah, let's practice a little bit more okay. first. <laughs> so, cheers. Cheers. Wait till you see what I have for you next week. <laughs>